the thing that the elitists really are pushing is global control. That's not the same thing as globalization. Globalization is the idea that there ought to be as much widespread trade as possible without endangering national security. I have no problem with that general idea. However, global control is what they're really pushing. The idea that they get to set the rules for everything in your life at the top level, elitists over at Davos getting together and figuring out how your life should run. And, and they ought to do this on a cultural level as well. They're going to decide the cultural hallmarks of elitism and you must obey. You must repeat. You must enthusiastically celebrate. You must use the pronouns. You must fly the pride progress flags. You must speak the Black Lives Matter nostrums. It's a new religion, in other words. And it's a religion with a priesthood. And the priesthood are the people who meet at Davos. They're the people, as John Kerry explicitly said, who are touched by something, touched by perhaps the divine, to, to take power and leverage it down on you. A problem with this is they are a really crappy priesthood. And the religion that they are preaching is real garbage. And it is no substitute for traditional religion. The decline of traditional religion made room for this group of false prophets to sort of take control and then claim that they were going to fill the whole left in the human heart by religion. But that hole cannot be filled this way. There's a fascinating new study out. It's a working paper from Tyler Giles of Wellesley College, Daniel Hungerman of the University of Notre Dame, and Tamar Ustrom of Ohio State University. They looked at the relationship between religiosity and mortality from deaths of despair. And what they found, unsurprisingly, is that as religiosity in a society decreases, deaths of despair increase. Now, the metric that they used is really what's fascinating here. So what they noticed is not just that, the, that there was a massive decline in people who say they are religious in the United States. What they found is that the actual association between increases in death of despair and decline in religion, decline of religion, in their view, is defined by lack of religious practice. Not how often you say you pray, not religious thought, not spiritual, but not religious. The thing that actually defines whether you are more likely to die a death of despair is whether you have dropped out of religious practice, which again, demonstrates that religion is a way of life. And when you lose religion, you lose your way of life. Religion is praxis. It is not merely theoretical. And secular society basically says that religion, if you are a believer, ought to be relegated to the realm of your mind. That is not how religion has worked historically. It's not how religion works practically. Religion has a very Aristotelian cast. Aristotle, of course, suggested that if you wish to be virtuous, you must practice virtue. Right? That if you wish to be a good person, you must practice doing good things. If you want to be generous, you have to do generous things over and over and over until you get in the habit of doing generous things. Religion says exactly the same thing. In my own religion, we are, we are hemmed in by literally thousands of arcane details of how you ought to live your life. The point of those arcane details is to train you to think about something higher. It's to train you to think about doing the good and right thing in the most minute everyday activities. And when you drop out of religious practice, the idea of sort of broad spectrum religious ideas is not a substitute for that. What the secular world basically contended is that you could practice a secular life while having religious thoughts, and that is not the way this works. And that's what this study finds. And it finds that when you drop out of religious practice, you are more likely to drop into despair and, and into nihilism and into confusion, and into chaos. And you're also more likely to make yourself subject to false prophets like the people over at Davos. There's a reason why secularists buy into all of the garbage that you're hearing spewed by the elitists over in, in Davos. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, I want to talk to you about Daily Wire's most trusted privacy partner and a premier sponsor of this show, ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like checking in your baggage at the airport without a lock. You think your stuff is kept private, but you never know who exactly is going through your personal items. When you go online without a VPN, ISPs can see every single website you visit. They can legally sell that information to ad companies and tech giants who then use it to target you with their advertisements. When you use ExpressVPN, ISPs can't see your online activity. Your identity is anonymized by a secure VPN server. Your data is also encrypted for maximum protection. If that sounds confusing, it, it really isn't. All you have to do is fire up the app, click on a button. It's really easy to do. ExpressVPN works on all devices, phones, laptops, even routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected as well. Go check out ExpressVPN right now. Protect yourself the same way that I do online. Check out expressvpn.com slash Ben today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Ben. You can get an extra three months for free when you do expressvpn.com slash Ben. No reason to give anyone else access to your online activity. It is your data. Keep it your own. Check out expressvpn.com slash Ben today. Also, it's the start of a brand new year. And this year, Invest in your spiritual health with Hallow. It's the number one Christian prayer app in the United States. It is the number one Catholic app in the world. I'm a big advocate of Christians performing their religion and acting in accordance with, with their religion. It's great for you. It is great for your soul. Just like physical exercise, daily spiritual exercise is critical to your well-being, especially in a world where attacks on faith and religion happen all around us. Hallow helps you maintain a daily prayer routine. It is filled with studies, meditations, and reflections 
rooted in Christian prayer practices. Start the new year with daily Bible readings and reflections from the number one Christian podcast, The Bible in a Year, or pray alongside Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, or world-class athletes who will help inspire and motivate you to work toward your true purpose in life and in accordance with God's will. Hallow has over 6,000 prayers, meditations, and peaceful music playlists to choose from and can help you sustain your spiritual practice throughout your entire day. It is filled with studies, meditations, and reflections, including that number one Christian podcast, The Bible in a Year. Try Hallow for three months free at hallow.com slash Shapiro. That's H-A-L-L-O-W.com slash Shapiro to get started. The authors of this study noted that many measures of religious adherence began to decline actually in the late 1980s. They found that the large decline in religious practice was driven by the group experiencing subsequent increases in mortality, white middle-aged Americans without a college degree. States that experienced larger declines in religious participation in the last 15 years of the 20th century saw larger increases in deaths of despair. The researchers looked at the repeal of blue laws in particular, blue laws limited commerce, typically on Sunday mornings. These laws have been shown to be strongly related to religious practice, creating discrete changes in incentives to attend religious services that are plausibly unrelated to other drivers of religiosity, they said. The repeal of blue laws had a 5 to 10 percentage point impact on weekly attendance of religious services and increased the rate of deaths of despair by two deaths per 100,000 people, they found, which is a reasonably large share of the initial rise in the deaths of despair. As the study found, it's about formal religious participation. It's not belief or personal activities like prayer that people dropped out of that actually impacted their lives. It is formal religious participation because it makes you a member of a community. It binds you to a system. People require systems. And they're radical individualistic libertarians who believe that systems are all impositions on you. That is incorrect. People are embedded in systems of one sort or another. You get to choose the system in which you are embedded. You should choose to embed yourself in the system that is the most durable, embodies the most traditional wisdom, and is the best for you and your family. These results underscore the importance of cultural institutions like religious establishments in promoting well-being, they said. They further added they didn't know of any cultural phenomenon that matches the mortality patterns, which are seen for both men and women, but not in other countries, and in both rural and urban settings, but mostly middle-aged, less educated white individuals. The decline in religiosity matches mortality trends in all these characteristics, they wrote. They pushed back on the opioid theory. They said OxyContin was first introduced as a prescription drug in 1996, but by then, deaths of despair for middle-aged white Americans were already well above trend. By the way, one thing that is worthy of note is that no-fault divorce really became a national law in the 1980s. So if you're talking about what exactly shifted, no-fault divorce in the United States is essentially the thing that, that shifted. And, and with that came family breakdown, came a, a, the rise of individualistic, subjective autonomy, the belief that you were to be disconnected from institutions, and that bled all the way down the chain. One of the great ironies, by the way, when it comes to the elitists is that they don't actually live like they preach. If you look at the elitists, many of them are married. Many of them have kids. Many of them went to college. Most of them made pretty good life decisions, which is how they got to be successful. But the stuff that they preach is precisely the opposite of that. And it's ingested by pop culture and then spewed out there. And people who are sort of lower down on the economic scale, those are the people who tend to embody that. And then those are the ones who suffer. The elitists who, who if, if you believe like John Kerry does, that the elitists were given the power to rule, which is not something that I traditionally believe. I believe that God was given the power to lead and that it was your job to follow God, right? But they believe that they are the new gods. If they believe that, then shouldn't they get the blame when things fall apart? And the answer, of course, is they won't get the blame when things fall apart because they are the special people and they get to also control the dissemination of punishment. So of course, it's everybody else's fault, but their own. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into how Republicans are staffing the House Oversight Committee. It is fascinating. They're going to get very aggressive very quickly. Plus, we'll be getting to a suburban LGBTQ plus minus divided by sign pedophile ring that has now been actually uncovered. Pretty horrifying stuff. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro. Check out for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.